Hello and welcome to Wolfman Gaming. This is my Uncharted 3 crushing difficulty walkthrough and this is chapter 14 also known as Cruisin' for a Bruisin'. <laughs> ah, that is the dumbest Uncharted chapter title ever. <laughs> it is also quite interesting, whenever I sit down to narrate these episodes, sometimes I have to go online to check out what they're called in English. Because since I have my PS4 set to Swedish, I only get the Swedish title cards. And sometimes they <laughs> have been very liberal when they're translating these titles. Because Swedish title of this chapter translates into English as The Hunt for Frill. So quite quite creative. <laughs> And in this chapter, I will also show you how to unlock a bonus trophy. A trophy called Marco Solo. And I went in through trophy list because I know I had done what the requirements for this on the PS4 version. But I wasn't quite sure if if the trophy was in this game. I, know, I knew it was in the original game. But they have skipped some of the trophies in these remastered versions. But it is in there, and it's a trophy called Marco Solo. I don't know if I already said that, but you unlock it by playing around in the swimming pool up on what's called the cruise deck, play deck, whatever. I don't know anything about boats. But we're going to play around in a swimming pool until Nate says Marco twice, and that will unlock the trophy. And in this chapter there are two big fights coming up. One of them will start very soon and this is the fight that I think people have a tendency to think is the hardest. And that has a lot to do with a brute that shows up. And a brute packing a, a rifle the size of Texas basically. <laughs> but I have a really great strategy for him to take him out and also for this first part of the battle. Because we see a little cutscene here where Nate falls down and the key here is to be extremely aggressive. So I pop out immediately, gun down one guy, try to shoot another guy, didn't work so great. For some reason he did not react at all to my bullets except for the fact that he fell down and died which, which is the whole purpose of shooting him. And you need to be careful with this boat when it's rocking back and forth. Because these crates will start moving around and also those containers. And if you're really unlucky, especially that big container can crush you. You saw the transition there. It took me maybe two attempts to get this guy to go down. And what I did was I throw two grenades instantly. The very second or just before he drops down, I throw both grenades where I know he will land. So he takes the full blast, then I use the cover trick as best I can, and I just start spraying his face. He needs to get a, a automatic rifle shampooing. We're back at Nate's hairdressing and hairstyling. And he takes quite a beating, as you could see, but... Just aim for his face and let your rifle rip. And now we have a bunch of enemies up here on the, on the top floor. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna call it, the top floor. I bet there is some uh, nerdy nautical term for it. But I don't know it and I don't care. <laughs> if you want to, feel free to pick up the brute's rifle. This is the only chance you have of using it. You cannot bring it from this fight. That is something you need to be aware of. And I think that when you pick it up, Nate drops his rifle and it picks that up instead. So if you want to use it to take down these guys, do so. It can be a good idea to do it and save your bullets going into the next fight. Because the next fight is quite, quite big. Quite a few enemies, I think it's... What is it, three waves of enemies? Could be two. But it's always good to bring as much ammo as you can into the next fight. And I chose to go with the Uzi. Whatever it's called in this game, I can't remember it. 
Here, anyway, is the swimming pool. And what you want to do is head for the deep end, where there is a lot of water. And Nate will start saying Marco once, and then he says Marco again, and then I think the trophy unlocks. If it doesn't unlock immediately after he says it the second time, just hang around in the water for a little longer. And that should unlock the trophy. But here we have the ballroom, or restaurant, whatever it is. And you can stealth kill a few of these guys. You cannot stealth kill all of them. So I recommend taking out as many as you can stealthily. And in a perfect scenario, also that guy up there by uh, the big piano, what's called the grand piano, he is a trigger point. Whenever you go for him, all the enemies, for some reason, I have no idea why, they spot you. You saw I took out that first guy on the left. No one noticed a thing. Not even the guy standing by the grand piano. But the very second I went up for him, everyone suddenly turned around. And that is the trigger to kick off this fight. And hiding behind these... Whatever it is. Benches? <laughs> Is actually a really good strategy because some enemies will drop down from the top floor, some will come from down there. And you have a great position up here to move around. And also something that would be really great is to not use the Magnum in this fight. It does help a lot if you go for it, but if you can I recommend you preserve it. Because in the next chapter you will start off in a big fight that is actually to be completely honest it's really hard unless you know the spawns and you want to bring as much ammo as possible and as good weapons as possible into the next chapter but I use the magnum here and if you want to so should you but if you have the possibility to uh, not use it in in this fight, <laughs> then I recommend you save it for the next chapter. But that takes care of the first wave of enemies. Now there are some snipers up there on the balcony. And I'm gonna move over to the other side of this room to trigger the next spawn. I don't think it triggers while you're standing down here, or at least they won't attack you while you're standing down here. So what you wanna do is head through this room, and since they are snipers, Stay mobile, roll whenever they get their laser sight on you. And we go over to this side and you'll see a little transition. Because I got really unlucky. The first time I ran here to get back, a guy shows up with a grenade launcher. The first attempt I did, <laughs> I ran straight into that grenade. It was a beautiful shot. He clocked me right in the face. <laughs> And that was an instant death. And the reason I move over to this side of the room is that now I don't have to worry about Mr. Grenade Launcher guy. Because he will not jump down. He cannot fire down in under the balcony. Down in under the balcony. That's a... <laughs> that's a great sentence. <laughs> and... Down here you're more or less safe from the snipers as well. And be aware of your surroundings. I have no idea how I survived that. I took one shotgun blast to the side and I'm not quite sure that second blast must have missed. It shouldn't have missed because it was a point blank range and we all know how buckshot works. It comes out of the barrel and it spreads. But the game decided to be a bit lenient on me. But anyway, you're safe from the sniper, sniper guys, the sniper guys down here and also the rocket launcher guy. So what you can do here is just use the cover trick. Put yourself in a position where they can't aim at you and just start grinding them down. And I think there even are free snipers up there because I know I take out these two and then I take out the grenade launcher guy and when I moved over to the other side of the room 
later when I've taken out these guys. A third sniper shows up. So I don't know if it's an enemy that picks up his sniper rifle. I don't think they do. Because the only time in these games where enemies change weapons is when they go to mana turret. Then they use the turret gun. <laughs> So I think there are free snipers, but we all know snipers are bitches. They can't aim for shit. If they manage to hit you, they will kill you, but it takes so long you'll die of old age before that ever happens. And now I'm just gonna move into a position where I can take out grenade launch guy. A bit nervous because his grenades are going right over my head. And after that close encounter where one of them kissed me straight in the face, I'm being a little bit careful, a little bit anxious. <laughs> because I don't think there are any checkpoints. Or actually there is a checkpoint between the first and second wave. So if I die right now, I will restart behind that crate on the other side of the room where you saw that transition. And I think that is the only checkpoint you get in this fight. But this fight is not very hard as long as you play it intelligently. And finally I managed to clock him and his grenade launcher always falls down. And that is one of the weapons I'm gonna bring into the next chapter. And here I will make a little mistake. What I recommend you do here is pick up the cal and pick up as much ammo as possible before you move over to this side of the room. Because after you shoot down this sniper, some enemies are gonna come in and storm in through the door on the right. You know that fancy door over there? I'm gonna throw in a grenade and spawn kill most of them. You see, I'm lining up. I'm just waiting for that door to pop open. You can hear them arguing outside the door. You can see them over to the left in the corridor. So I throw in a grenade and I get really lucky because it blows up and one of them drops his grenade. And what you should do now is bring out a cal and start just spraying into that little hallway or that corridor. Instead I wasted one of the grenades. Or I didn't waste it. <laughs> it, it made its target and fulfilled its goal. But it's very stupid to use it there. That is my mistake and learn from my mistakes. I could have used that grenade in the next chapter. And here you saw a horrible transition once again. And the only thing I've cut out there is me running around that room for about 5 minutes trying to decide which weapons I'm gonna bring into chapter 15. And I decided to go with, of course, the grenade launcher. Always bring the grenade launcher. Do not use it in this chapter at all. Learn from my mistake. And I also decided to go with the Uzi because I got the most bullets for that, I think. And now I'm standing around here forever. I was a bit indecisive. If I was gonna go in, I wanted to maybe be sneaky and just stealth kill him. But he's one of two enemies. I was gonna say he was the only enemy, but I've forgotten about this guy. But we just swing him around the corner, bash his skull against the wall, and now we are safe. All that remains in this chapter right now is sneaking through this little corridor this down here, and we can start heading down the stairs into the... It's called the freight compartment? Don't think it is. You know, where, where they stash everything they're transporting. <laughs> I feel I should read up on nautical terms before I started commentating this episode. <laughs> but we see that Sul Sully is trapped down here on a chair. So I'm gonna jump over to this big metal construction and make our way down with Nate's lovely unbreakable fingers. That is something I realized during Uncharted 4 that his fingers are truly unbreakable. But going up Sully ends the chapter and I want to thank you very much for watching and I will see you again in my next video. So until next time, this is the Wolfman signing off.